Welcome to a quick and dirty guide on how to play uh, Hearts of Iron 4 as a minor power. Uh, minor powers have, in my opinion, a far worse time than the majors. The majors, you kind of, they're great to learn minors, then you can go on to have real success in major nations. But majors have a lot of things you don't have to deal with as a minor, so as a friendly, it's typically good to pick a, uh, sorry, as a newbie to the franchise, uh, you should really be picking a minor nation that doesn't really get involved in the war and it's out of its own choice. I'm playing as Ireland right now. Um, key thing to know about Ireland is that it really doesn't have to pick a side. It could be quite content to watch the United Kingdom get eaten, it could join the UK in invading Germany, or it could just go for a complete screwball and become part of the common turn and become communist. So a quick little overview of the UI. This be your nation's political tab. Here you can control all of your conscription and political advisor laws, as well as um, research and production um, companies and military staff. Also like the national focus is here. This tab, research tab, allows you to research new technologies for your faction. Diplomacy isn't really all that important. The diplomacy tab, you can sit here and just scroll through nations, click on them, have political deals. Um, it's also just as easy to click on a country's territory, then click here. Just to refresh that, click on any nation, any nation's property. You're gonna have this little state owner flag up here in the upper left corner of this tab. Click on that flag, it'll bring you right to the diplomacy section of that country. Trade, uh, trade can be very important once you start producing things. This shows you which nations are producing what. Um, you can flip the tab, like see here's the oil tab, aluminum, rubber, tungsten, steel, and chromium. You can rummage through here and it'll always list the nation that produces the most of that material up front. Of course, it'll also show you nations that aren't producing any at all or have issues. Trade influence determines how much of a deal you'll get. Of course, then you can also filter it through like Europe, whatnot, but not really important for a minor nation, at least to begin with. Your construction tab shows you, well, what you're building for factories, for airports, whole nine yards. And you have the production tab, which is what you're actually producing with your said factories. In this case, we're building infantry equipment. Recruit deployments where you can, well, build and deploy uh, infantry divisions and later on tank and cavalry, and basically whatever you want divisions. Um, okay, construction logistics is where you can see how much of everything you need and how much you're producing of it. Like for example, I've got a surplus of 10 convoys, which is this icon up here, in the logistics tab. However, I do have a massive uh, shortage of infantry equipment because I have got this infantry division right here. Now, every infantry division comes with two bars, or actually any division in general. It's got this green bar, and then it's got this orange bar. The green bar is the organization, which is how organized the division is going into combat. The, in this case, what would be a gold or brown, or a uh, orange bar is in the, almost in the red here, almost in the brown. It's showing that it is missing fighting equipment. Um, it's, this is its unit's fighting strength. This is dependent on its manpower and the amount of equipment it has. Uh, for example, it has got, if we could go into further detail, which I should, I should be able to do. There you go. Click on the tab itself, it'll show you what it has and what it needs. So it has 900 men in its division. However, it only has 270 rifles to go around to the 900 men. So its combat stats are going to be very bad compared to a full strength division. You also got these little icons up here, which are you got your resource level available, free civilian factories, national focus set, no divisions of basic training. This will let you know that, hey, you're missing something, attend to it. Now I'll get into the more just stat padding things that you got. There's only a couple you have to 
I should pay attention to. This is your national unity. National unity determines how much of your territory can be lost before you surrender. Ireland having 70% national unity can lose 70% of its um, victory points before it surrenders. So in this case, with um, Dublin being five points, as you can just hover over the star, it's your capital and it's worth five victory points. And Cork being one victory point, you can lose Cork without Ireland just surrendering instantly. However, you could not lose Dublin without surrendering or fighting guerrilla warfare from that point on until you're liberated by a friendly faction or ally. On the right of that is political power. Political power determines if you can change your government and how it works. So this is very important, especially as a, uh, a minor, this is just important for changing political advisors and changing um, focuses. As a major nation, political power is very important because this is what allows you to politically change um, other nations. You can influence other nations in political power as a major. Manpower is pretty important. This tells you how many people you can actively have in your armed force at any given time. You can change this through conscription laws. And this will tell you the number of factors you've got. These three little stars above your warning indicators indicate Army, Navy, and Air Experience. As you go through and the game, either through appointing um, advisors or through completing national focuses or your units fighting in combat, um, you will gain experience in these different fields. What that allows you to do is you go into production. Say you wanted to build, well, I can't do that. Say you wanted to build a fighter or modify some equipment. Especially with tanks and aircraft, you can then modify the ships. Ireland doesn't start off with much of anything, so it's unfortunately at a very uh, high disadvantage. What you can do, however, is if, say, I had, like, 50 army experience, I could go into the infantry division, I could edit it, and I could, say, add another infantry, which costs five experience, army experience, to put another infantry um, battalion into the division. Navy and air experience can be used to modify um, aircraft types as you gain experience, you can do that. You can also set your divisions to... Um, Once in, a, uh, once in an army, which I will get into how to create armies in a moment, um, well, actually, I should say once I deploy fresh divisions, when army works, uh, will allow you to train and do drills in the field so that you can also gain XP as you test your equipment out to see if it's got any major flaws. It's especially good with new equipment, so long as you're not in a war. Once you're in a war, basically, you've got to try and just grin and bear the teething problems. So, as a miner, what is some things you got to focus on? Well, first thing you've got to really focus on is industrial effort. Army efforts and all this is nice, but first you need to have the industry to back it up. For civilian industry is the start of all things. Speaking of which... I'm going to build just... Uh, actually, I'm going to build three civilian factories there. I'm going to just fill everything else with military. You'll notice that this has an icon of 5 of 15. It's only... This means that this building is only being constructed at one third of the efficiency it could because they only have five civilian factories as opposed to the 15 needed to construct the set full capacity. This little bar here tells you when the next factory will be ready, which the next factory at its current rate of a penalty of construction will be done in December of 1936. National focuses can help that. Anyway, moving on. So you need to get up your civilian industry so you can build up a lot of things. So, uh, civilian industry is also used to repair other industry once it gets damaged or bombed. So having a good civilian industry to 
back up a good war economy is critical. So the national focus just focus on industrial effort at first. Research slots. You're gonna to want to focus on construction and basic machine tools, as well as um, mechanical engineering. As for divisions in training, well, we don't really have the equipment to put a lot of uh, units in training, so we're going to train a single infantry division now. A key thing here is so you don't have to keep clicking the train infantry division button. If you see here, you've got an infinite amount of divisions that this line will produce. So you can modify this up or down to how many divisions you want. Right now I want one division, but I want to add a unit. So I'll be producing two divisions in parallel. And let's see, I want them deployed in port. So there you go. Once this unit gets equipment, it will start training and you'll be good to go. A typical infantry division, once it has equipment, takes about four months to train. Now, how about politics? Say you want to be in a faction. Ireland, at the beginning of the game, actually we'll start the game here, get a decent speed because it's gonna take some uh, time for everything to happen. So, say you wanted to join the Allies. That's pretty easy. You're, the UK is your neighbor, you don't really wanna to go to war with them. Um, it's just a safer bet. It's the safe route to go. The Irish are already a democratic nation. So it's 98% democratic, with 1% fascist party support and 1% communist party support. Once you accrue the political power, you can change the political advisor to... That's interesting. Douglas uh, Hyde allows for a proper period. I haven't seen this yet. Um, let's see, a fascist demagogue or communist revolutionary can slowly begin to move your uh, nation towards one party, sorry, uh, one faction or another. Another option is for major nations, such as Germany, the UK, Soviet Union, Italy, France, to start influencing you towards their factions which is a slow process and is fairly effective. So for maximum efficiency, you're gonna want them to influence you and you to be either majority of your political parties believe in that factious ideology or that uh, you've got a lot of outside influence so that you can just join the party sooner. Now. There's another key thing I did not mention earlier because this goes into this mostly cripples, uh, pardon, this most cripples democratic nations, which is world tension. World tension basically is how close the world is to the brink of all out world war. And it kind of keeps the hands of democratic nations tied because most of the, like, England, France, the US suffered horrible losses in World War One, so don't want to go do it again. Fascist and communist nations do not have to listen to world tension. Communist nations do a little bit more than fascist. Fascists can go right out and start justifying war goals at the beginning of the game with no penalties. They can just go out and do it. But say as Ireland, I want to declare war in the UK for no apparent reason. I can't. I'm a democratic nation. I cannot sit there and go, I'm going to declare war on you for no particular reason. Unless they have generated world tension. So, say once Italy conquers Ethiopia, because Italy and Ethiopia are currently in war, what you can do is then you could just uh, justify a war goal against Italy declaring war in Ethiopia, but world tension has to be at 100% for me to do so, because we are democratic nations, so there has to be ludicrously high world tension to do anything, really, unless you switch your party to fascist or communist. But let's go into some other things. So volunteer only is fine. 
the most you can do is go up to unlimited, uh, sorry, limited conscription or disarm nation. You cannot do any of this because World Tension says you cannot. Kind of the same with this. And this especially is where you can't really do anything. Ooh. Germany has remilitarized the rental. We've completed our national focus for industrial effort. We could go for an armament um, effort or a construction effort. I'm going to go for the construction effort right now just to get that extra civilian factory. Then after that, I'll go for the military focus. Another thing is with Democratic Nations, you got elections, so that you've got to keep in mind that, so that you know what your party Oh, and Spain has gone to war with itself. So the Spanish Civil War started, so we'll see which side is the victor, if the Germans or the Soviet Union are more proficient in their support for their opposing sides in the Spanish Civil War. The main goal of this tutorial is to get you through the first year of Hearts of Iron 4, which is... 1936, the initial build-up, the foundation in which everything else your nation is going to do is going to happen. If you'll see, one of my units is not being trained because he doesn't have any equipment yet. This one has got 20, almost 30% equipment and training. You can deploy any division line instantly once it's got more than 20% equipment and 20% training. It will send a bunch of rookies out with extremely poor equipment, or limited equipment, but that's fine. Okay, so we just completed um, electronic engineering. We could for go for mechanical computing, but the biggest thing is to wait for one of these to be done so then we can use the 50% bonus towards research for one of the other techs. Then we'll take a look at their industry and look at to see which side we're going to join um, for tech. So there's a couple options here where you could go and rummage around for infantry equipment. One of the biggest things I want to do right now, however, is that we have no support equipment for our infantry, which is a major handicap. So we're going to research that so our divisions fight more effectively in combat with the equipment they have which also allows us to add support battalions to infantry divisions. Some of these will add very powerful benefits for little to no manpower cost, which makes the unit fight more effectively, though it will do a couple of fairly odd things to... Alright, see, now we've got enough... Um... So now we have to think about what we want to do. We've got enough political power that we can either appoint someone to our military staff, someone to our design team in the government, or add a political advisor. So one of the key things you gotta look at here is, now you look at the big picture. Which faction do you wanna join if you don't wanna stay democratic? Do you wanna go communist or do you wanna go fascist? In this case, we're gonna go for a little alternate history. We're going to make Ireland fascist. But this might take a couple of years. We have elections in 1937. We have elections every four years, which means the next election would be 1941. But we're going to start supporting a fascist movement. So now we've got a choice. Now we've got a fascist demagogue in charge as a political advisor. Now you've got two ideas. So, eventually, so you've got two ways to control how your country handles things. So you could either go and start corrupting other politicians, talking to them, making them support the fascist movement, and potentially throw a coup against the current government, or you could start influencing the populace with the younger generation to take up the torch. So, we're 
we're gonna have the um, youth go for it. We're gonna have, have the general population. Let's start working on this. Now, if you'll see, communist popularity and democratic popularity are increasing. Well, fascist popularity is increasing every day. From a technology standpoint, like basic machine tools will be done fairly shortly, so that would be good. Basic machine tools allow for higher production caps and efficiency caps for production. It basically allows you to churn out more things per factory. Which is pretty greatly needed here. Okay, so religion has gone up by 3% because Italy just annexed Ethiopia. Which means if I went to Italy's diplomacy tab, Interesting, because I can... Oh, wait, no. Germany's had the most world tension. Before. Yeah, the new world tension three per, at 100%, they've only cost 3%. So you can't really do that. Germany's working on the right auto bomb. But you notice our manpower has gone down since I've got two more divisions in training. Basic machine tools are done. So, we've made the decision to go to the fascist, try to go towards the axis. So, now you had a couple of key choices to make for your industry. Concentrate industry is great for neutral nations who are going to be far from the battlefields. So, it would be if you were a, either a common turn, common, you could do a concentrate industry if you were going to go common turn or fascist, but I'm saying the UK is going to be right next to you, and the UK has bombers and will probably have air superiority over you. Concentrate industry isn't that great because it does make the factories vulnerable to air attack, but it does have a better factory output and a better max factory to stake. The express industry, however, reduces the uh, vulnerability of your factories to be damaged from bombing raids, while still allowing the extra 20% of factories in any province you own. The only downside being it has less factory output, but better efficiency retention, so that you don't lose as much efficiency in production. I'm actually going to go for dispersed industry. To complete construction effort. Now, we're actually going to go for the second construction effort before switching to the armament effort. If you look, this should be progressing a little faster now. When it jumped from the end of December, for example, to now it will be the, towards the end of November when the factory will be constructed. I'm showing the power of even just an additional one or two civilian factories in the long run. This is going to increase speed even more to watch the uh, Spanish Civil War unfold. Looks like the uh, Nationalists are going to win this one. Oh, I know, some timely reinforcements in the Soviet Union might change that around. Get 
Construction one has been completed, as has support equipment. So now we've got to go to industry. And if it's a if there's something ahead of time, if you got like 50% bonus towards it, you could research it ahead of time, or if you have nothing else to research that's useful. Improved machine tools while useful and construction two while useful would not prove the best um, investment of our limited research slots. Mechanical computing, which would bring down research time, could be useful. However, something that will be more useful in the long run. Actually, no. We'll go with mechanical computing. As for our second research tab, we could choose a land doctrine. So the idea of this is so that you've got, let's focus more infantry and support um, regiments. Blitzkrieg obviously focuses on armored warfare. Grand battle plan is mostly what the allies use, which is a great um, infantry tactic. The mass assault is, of course, the favorite of the combat. Uh, there are there are no faction specific battle plans. You can choose any of that which you want to play. So. In this case, what am I looking at? Hmm. You can also switch between doctrines at any time. I'm going to go for superior firepower because hopefully we'll have an interesting build up, but we won't have that much manpower. So we're going to need to overwhelm the enemy. So we'll get to work on a doctrine. Doctrines can take up to a year to research if you don't have a lot of experience. And our every single, it doesn't matter what political effort it is, the national focus takes 70 days to complete. So that allows you to kind of plan two and a half months ahead to what you're going to be doing once that one's completed. I can put another advisor. So I'm actually going to add a material designer, which I'm going to have for small arms. Number two has been completed, so we're actually going to now go for armored effort one. This first industry has been complete as well. Research. So now we're going to go bring up some artillery. Here we're making a surplus of production per day of infantry equipment. And we've had one infantry division at Cork be deployed. The games of the uh, 11th Olympiad have been completed. Early game, especially as a minor nation, is really spending a lot of your time focusing on trying to get your industry up. No real grand war plans yet, but that will come. Now, if you'll see that since we started uh, putting a fascist demagogue into politics, that we actually have 17% support for the fascist party. Well, support for the Communist Party and the Democratic Party are falling rapidly. And of course, every month also the um, local manpower will go up by a certain amount. As you can see, the recruitable population will go up to, uh, by 54 every month. The more territory you own, the more cities you own, obviously the more that increases. the armament effort one. So now I think we're going to focus on let's add some infrastructure. Actually, you know, let's go for a political effort. Because that might allow us to go to a nationalism focus. Or we could focus on the army a bit. 
So we'll actually go for the army focus. So now we've got an extra military factory. You, it shows the total need we have for weapons one, which is basically full, so we don't need any more really. We can modify politics again. So let's add a theorist. Not a military theorist, so we have a bonus to researching land options. We have no units in basic training, we need to fix that. Well, I just add one more division. We'll stick it. Uh, oh no, not that unit. Let's stick it uh, near Dublin. And now I can explain after I start a production queue of. Now it's the, it gives me complaint that I've got low manpower. Whenever your units fielded is more has more manpower than the amount of reserve manpower you have, the game will give you an issue of which, hey, you could take severe combat losses and lose out your manpower. They also warn you that I'm building something that I don't have a template for, and I'm also warning me that I'm building something that I do not have the um, material for. See, I don't have enough steel, so I'm getting, let's see how much of a buff. I'm getting a 45% decrease in production efficiency for support equipment because I don't have it. So we've just finished basic artillery. And. Alright, so we've got a bunch of things going on right now, so we need to focus on a couple other things. First of all, it's very close to 1937, so now we can safely begin researching a new tech. This is go for improved machine tools. Now I'll explain how divisions work. As soon as you've got more than two division, more than one division, you can assign them to an army. So we shall have this here. We'll have this as this um, army one. You click up here to assign a commander, so we've got Michael Costello, which is our general, or we could hire a new general. We'll go uh, Michael Costello for now. Now you're going to have these tons of options. Naval invasion order, where you could start from Dublin, let's just show how everything works. So you could sit there and all right, click here. You could right click here for an invasion, you need enough transports to execute the invasion, and it'll take a certain amount of time to plan it. I still have not chosen that to focus at the moment. So, let's see. Let's go for the political effort now. You know, back to the armies. Front lines can be assigned against enemy borders by just right-clicking and dragging. And that army will then automatically deploy up there. Once you've got a defensive line, you can sit there and draw an offensive line. I see another option, so... rather than the communists, so that will just increase the amount of fascist pressure on my government. But uh, drawing a battle line, so we can't get things done, is again, right click and drag. Green means you've got enough divisions to occupy all of the territory. Yellow means that you've got, there are divisions, so they will be able to hold that position if there's only light resistance. Red means there's no way that the units that you have selected can attack that area effectively or hold it. You've also got garrison area, and it will game will give you warning that you chose to garrison, that the standing orders will be removed. Garrison an area will just have the uh, units patrol around to keep uh, political resistance down to a little. Then fallback lines are just defensive lines that you can draw anywhere inside your own territory or enemy territory that you've invaded. But we've got a couple of starts now, so let's start working on interwar fighters. And our another division has deployed, so we will just select him. 
right click on the portrait of our general and now all three divisions are in general double click click on the general's portrait again to select all the units now you can delete orders by clicking the trash can icon and then individually left clicking on orders or right clicking on that will have you delete all orders from that army so we're going to try and draw new orders we're going to have these uh, men be on the uh, irish english border And we're going to put industrial company in charge. Yeah, the nationalist one. Oh, well, attention's gone up. Your firepower has been completed, so now we need to get to focus on something else. Or we could go off the delay doctrine, which I think I'm actually going to do. Because we got a 50% bonus for it. Political effort has also been completed. This is to wait just for the uh, collectivist ethos to be available once our ruling party has changed. And this time I think we'll go for a naval effort. Build up some of our naval industry so we can start building some ships and some convoys. So we'll just assign an armored company for when we actually get onto armor, so I'll just make life a little easier. And because I appointed a. I'll show you what I did. I added a theorist, I added a military theorist, so my. Per day, my army experience goes up a little bit, so we can start toying around with division templates now. Now that proven machine tools has been completed, I can also go for construction too. Check how our production's going. Let's see if we can uh, modify some of our existing infantry divisions. We got some support artillery, but we don't have any artillery in production, so that would be a bad idea at the moment. Let's wait for tech to come around. And we're just asking, you all just um, over time just occurring historical events. Sometimes they'll come out slightly differently. We've completed one factory. We're working on another. Civilian factories are one of the longest factories to build. Dockyards and military factories are built far quicker. About half the time, actually. Again. Put that captain of the industry just for increased building capacity. And let's go for a flexible navy. Placement finished, so I can go into research. This time we're actually gonna go for engineer companies to support battalion. Dockyards. And we can't really build anything without dockyards besides convoys, but that's a good thing. This allows us to start stockpiling convoys, but if you'll notice now that we've got a deficit of steel and oil, which is severely hampering production here. It's hampering production by 90%. Notice as well how I have no oil and no steel. I can actually still produce convoys, but at a 90% hamper to production. So there's two ways you can do this, deal with this problem. You go to trade, and trade for some oil or some steel. And trade civilian factories. Oh, Amelia Earhart circumnavigating the globe. Here's again, instead of Amelia Earhart disappearing, she's just circumnavigating. In this universe, she circumnavigates the globe. So I could trade one civilian factory for eight steel with the United States, but 
How much do I want to do that? The other way to do that is to research. You can research um, texts that will allow you to gather more. And Stalin is purging the Trotskyites. So that's normal. So the Great Purge has begun in 1937. Japan and China are about to get ready for war. So as you see, world tension is starting to go up now. The war fighters are available. I want to go into industry and I want to get excavation. X, so I actually have resources. Yeah, sure, I could trade off one civilian factory, but that'd be detrimental. But I'm going to get another military factory. You know, the fascist party's got enormous support in government. I'm actually going to move from civilian economy to early mobilization, which will allow more of our factories to be posted on producing other factories than civilian goods. Of my stockpiles, I've got over 2,000 rifles sitting, just being produced. And we've got plenty of support equipment also being produced. Construction 2 has been completed, which gives me a bonus to construction speeds. I also go for dispersed industry 2. There we go. And has declared war on the Chinese um, warlords, so there begins that struggle. National focus. This time, I think I'm going to go for a quick aviation. Actually, if I want to go for an aviation effort, and I want to go for an armament effort again. And I want to start building foot artillery, even though I don't have the resources for it. Here's where the game's gonna kind of force my hand a bit. You see, it takes uh, 7,200 production to place a factory, but it only takes 3,600 for military. So, engineer one has been complete. I'm gonna go for a recon company. Actually, no, we're not. I'm actually gonna go for support weapons. Now he's got in the surplus of support equipment. We're actually going to go into infantry division. We're going to edit it. We're going to add an engineer company as a support, which will cost us some organization, but give us more hit points and give us better attack stats. So I'm going to save that for and use 10 military XP. So 
We're just gonna start a civil war here. Half of our military units will go join the opposition party. Alright, delete all the orders. I'm gonna station them on the border with our rebels. I'm going to have them draw an offensive line to Bork. Now, see, this is a risky operation. We're going to have them do it anyway. I'm going to go for the Black Rose Ethos now. military factories from playing of that focus as well as free civilian factories because all of my production ethos all my production queues for pork have been cancelled I'm actually going to build another civilian factory there and some military factories here I'm taking out control of this infantry regiment that comes to attack here. Just gonna increase the amount of artillery we've got. Production. Actually, I might just take their capital, which will force the end of the war. There we go. Ellen was annexed. We seized a bunch of equipment. And I've got more military factories as a result as well. station these men back on the border with England because England is now threatened by us since we're fascist. And we're actually going to go for activation 2. And production will... moment. No production construction. include mm, two civvies and some military. I should build another dockyard in uh, Lannister as well. Also, in uh, research bombers because they will become useful. Now we can move up to partial mobilization, which will help us in the uh, factory realm, as well as now we can go for nationalism focus. I'll also probably start butting up to Germany at this point. I've actually just joined the Axis, so that'll be useful. Now let's start researching destroyers. They start building some military ships. So I'll have to end short tutorial. That was the first two years of playing as a minor nation in Hearts of Iron 4. The revolution in Ireland didn't quite go as well as anticipated, but we'll have to do. If you get more factories pumping out more things, so. 
otherwise not. That's first two years. That's how to start setting up your nation. And from there, it's really up to you and your national folks if you go to war or if you're trying to stay neutral through the whole ordeal.